alcohol markers! This things are super awesome guys, they make rendering architectural drawing so much easier. But it hasn't always been easy. When I first started using alcohol markers, I was super suck. I am super suck at grammar. Anyways, what I meant to say was I sucked at using alcohol markers, that is, until I learned how to use them. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to render some architectural materials using alcohol markers. Okay, before we begin, let's first talk about what colors and other materials you would need for this. For the paper, I usually use water coloring paper, but vellum will work just fine. The alcohol markers that I will be using are the Touch 5 alcohol markers. I chose these because they are the cheapest markers available on the market. So I put links in the descriptions to where you guys could buy these markers. So for the colors of the markers, we will be using browns and grays. For the browns, we have number 21 terracotta and number 97 rose beige. And for the grays, we will be using GG1 and GG3 green grays and WG1, WG3 warm grays. We're also going to need a pencil and a 0.2 uni pen and a white gel pen for our highlights and some brown and dark brown colored pencils and also we are going to need a white colored pencil. So for the first material, we are going to render one of the most common material used in postmodern architecture, which is concrete. Okay, so for this, we are going to use warm gray one and warm gray three. So I usually like to start with the lighter color first, the WG1. So when rendering concrete, we have to take note of the light source. That is the area in our drawing which will be the lightest. So for this one, I picked this corner to be the part where our light source is reflecting off. So we are going to leave that blank. Okay, once we're done shading with our warm gray one, we are now going to use our warm gray three and just add a little bit of fading effect from our highlight spot. After that, we are gonna go ahead and use our 0.2 Unipin to draw an outline on the edges of our concrete block. Now that that's done, it is now time to put some cracks on our concrete block. So for this, we are going to use a pencil and just start drawing cracks from the edges of the block. Also, we are going to add some dimples to the concrete and a few imperfections. Now we are going to add a few highlights with our white gel pen. So for the highlights, I always place them beside the edges and the corners to simulate a bit of three-dimensionality Dimension. Is that even a word? dimensionality -ness. Anyways, I use this alongside the cracks and other dimples to make the dimples look like it's a bit concave or like it's 3D. So basically, this is like a 3 d eyeser pen. Man, I just keep coming up with crappy words. Anyways, this is what brings our concrete block to life. It makes it pop. So after we've added the highlights, I go back to the warm gray number one marker. And now we just go over the fading area and soften the transition between the warm gray one and warm gray three a little bit. And boom! Just like that, we now have our concrete material. Obviously, you could make this whole drawing look a little bit better than what I just did here. It just looks a little bit crappy because I did it rush like it was due five minutes from now reasons <laughs> okay the next material we are going to render is cloth material mainly white cloths so for this we are going to need the marker gg1 or green gray one key when rendering cloth materials is to keep the shadows or the shaded areas as light as possible also it is a huge help to have a reference image when copying the cloth so let's begin by drawing a few lines that simulate the flowiness of the cloth or where the cloth folds and creates a shadow. These are the parts where the cloth basically like folds a little bit like that and where light doesn't really hit it so there's like a soft shadow thingy going on. So that's what these lines are for. So basically we'll just shade the parts where the cloth folds and where light won't hit it. And there you go, that's it. So cloth is one of the easiest to render materials but it's definitely one of the scariest. So one trick in mastering cloths is just to practice and look at a ton of like cloth pictures. Although don't get caught looking at cloth pictures, people might think you have a weird thing with cloth. Anyways, moving on to our third material, which are clay bricks. For this, we are going to use number 21 terracotta and number 97 rose beige. We start by laying out our base color, which is number 97, rose beige. 
Once that's down, I start drawing guidelines representing the divisions between the bricks. So after that, we pick random areas and shade them with the darker terracotta marker. Once we're satisfied with that, we just grab our brown and dark brown colored pencils and we just shade the edges of the bricks. Now comes the fun part where we use our white gel pen to simulate the mortar for our bricks. So let's begin by tracing out the outlines of each brick. Then we add a few imperfections to make it look more real. So once we're happy with how that looks, let's move on to shading one side of our brick cube with a warm gray number one marker. This gives it a little bit more dimension and a little bit more 3D-ness. 3D-ness is now a word, guys. Anyways, after that, we trace each brick with our pointy uni pin and add a few finishing touches with the brown colored pencils. And voila, we have a very wonky cube of bricks. Man, I really messed up with the perspective on this cube. Looks super wonky. Okay, so for the last three materials, we are going to combine them in a single drawing. So we are going to make a toilet scene with a wooden wall and a ceramic toilet and a tile floor. Okay, so first thing we are going to do is we are going to draw the outline of our toilet with our trusty Mongol pencil. Once that is done, we can begin coloring it in with our green gray number one. Here we are going to use the broad tip, making sure to do fast strokes curling up on the curved part of our toilet. On top of that, we are going to layer in a bit of our green gray number three, and then go back with our green gray number one to blend in the colors. Once we're done with that, we now have to trace the outline of the toilet with our 0.2 Unipin. And then finally, my favorite part as always, is adding in highlights with our gel pen. The key to making it look real is to place the highlights in places that naturally catch the light, like the edges of our toilet. And we're done. Now we just have to erase the pencil guidelines we did a while ago. Moving on, we now proceed to our wooden wall. For the base color, we are going to use the rose beige marker. So don't worry about the streaking. We can fix that later just by going over the parts that are very streaky. So for the darker wood planks, we will use the terracotta marker. Make sure to make it look random. Now to add the wood grain, we are going with the brown colored pencils. So it's probably better if you guys used a newly sharpened pencil. I was a little bit lazy and I didn't use a newly sharpened one. So yeah, the wood looks very, very crappy. So, but if you squint really hard like this, it kind of looks all right. So let's just hope the instructor squints while checking my drawing, which is highly unlikely. Anyways, after we're done adding in the wood grain, we begin to put the highlights in with our white colored pencil. So we are going to use the white colored pencil instead of the white gel pen because wood isn't really that shiny, just like a ceramic toilet. It just has a bit of gloss and the white pencil captures that varnish glossy look perfectly. So after we make the wood planks shiny, we now proceed to drawing a shadow under the toilet with our warm gray number one marker. After doing so, it is now time to color in our floor. For this, we are going to use the green gray number one marker. For the first layer, we'll have to shade in one direction. Then we are going to add another layer of random strokes just to simulate reflections of other things present within the area. So once we're happy with what we've got, we now begin to draw the guidelines of the tile graph. So this is where we are going to apply my favorite tool, the white gel pen, to simulate the division between the tiles. And boom, the floor already looks like tiles. Now we just add a few highlights with our white color pencil. So make sure that you don't overdo it. The key to rendering is moderation in strokes and shadows. Sometimes the more you add into the drawing, the faker it looks. And there we go. We are now done with our toilet scene where we rendered our toilet, which is a ceramic material, a wood material, and a tile material. And if you guys look at your screen from a far distance and squint your eyes a little bit like this, the drawing kind of looks a little bit good. <laughs> 
Anyways, I hope you guys were able to follow along this material rendering tutorial using alcohol markers. So if you guys found this video interesting or a little bit like helpful in an architectural manner, please like, comment, and subscribe down below for more videos, architectural videos, from me, your boy Lian, Archi Squad represent Flying Peace.